the reason I was I was kept bothering you, kept bothering you to have this conversation is I'm really worried about the next couple of months. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> and I, if there's anybody in this world that could help alleviate <laughs> my worry by um, by at least walking along with me through this worry of mine, it's you. Do you think we're headed towards some kind of civil war, some kind of division that explodes beyond just stuff on Twitter, but something that's really destruct destructive to the fabric of our society? Well, I, I believe we're in a revolution, as you know. I've called it the no-name revolution or N-squared revolution. I've been talking about it for years. I don't think, I think waiting for this to be called a civil war is not smart. Only history will call it such. Fine. But I think that the problem is, is that you're encountering things that you've never seen, trying to fit them into things that you already know. Right. And, but history re repeats itself. Yes. Ish. <laughs> you don't see lessons from history. In I do. We see today. But I don't see it repeating itself. You know, the, 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 what about famous, violence? the famous quote is that it rhymes. It rhymes. I mean, the thing I'm, I guess I'm speaking to is violence. And we're in there. The abstraction of violence. Imagine you were coding up violence as an abstract class. Okay. Thank you for speaking to the audience. <laughs> Trying to lose these people. Come with me. <laughs> Go no, no, on. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, look, I've dealt with your audience, yeah. and your audience contains yeah. some of the smartest people around. Yeah. I guarantee you, if I say some stuff, uh, first of all, any wrong thing that I'll say, they're yeah. going to detail. Okay. So that, that'll be a little bit of catnip to, to bring yeah. in the smart people. <laughs> but they'll also digest it for each other. It's one of the great lessons of long form podcasting. If you don't, if you don't waste all your time explaining things, that's the job of the audience to do amongst themselves. They're happy doing the work, and those who aren't, they leave. Isn't that great? They'll leave. The people who don't want to struggle will leave. You can get rid of them. I think that the point is, you you would want to say violence is defined relative to a context. So let's call it meta violence, so that we don't get into the the problem. We already have a term for physical violence, right? So we have meta violence and physical violence. I would say that physical violence is subclassed from meta violence. Meta violence is the disruption of a, a system. It's sort of, you know, it's a, you know, if we, for example, if a cell dies, it, it can die through it apoptosis or necrosis. Apoptosis is controlled, programmed cell death. Uh, necrosis is just like, okay, this didn't work. That was a violent disruption of the system. And this meta class is presumed in the documentation. Is it all negative? No. What are you talking about? So well, th this is part of the problem in the madness of our age, right? Which is if you, if you open up a drawer in your in your cabinet, right, in your kitchen, and you see knives, spoons, and forks. Do you have a sense that the spoons are good utensils and the knives or forks are bad utensils because they're mean? I mean, like, if you start thinking in these terms, yeah, that knife is there to do violence. That's violence you want done, right? right? When I cut a mango, I'm doing violence to the mango. The mango expects that I will do violence to it because otherwise it I won't be able to get the the meat and it won't get its seed um, spread somewhere else. So in part, violence is absolutely part of our story. So, okay, so there's this meta-violence class. Yeah. And what's... So the meta-violence class is already, you know, it's a multiple inheritance pattern. Whatever's going on right now inherits from meta-violence. No, but there's, there's certain <laughs> subclasses that allow evil to emerge. So what, what what I'm specifically worried about is that- the yeah, What's on your mind, Lex? What's, what's really going on? Okay. I, I worry that um, amidst the chaos of we have these protests or the chaos that could be created by the feeling that the election does not represent the- the voice of the people, like saying that whoever gets, quote unquote, wins the election according to the some kind of reporting of the numbers that come out, that's not going to represent 
what people actually want, who people actually want to be the leader. Like something in that narrative will create so much division that people will resort to literal violence, like protests that really, that the United States loses its united aspect. And because of that, because of that chaos and tension, evil, evil people, evil forces, that my definition of evil is, you know, just cruel human beings use that moment to attain power, the kind of power that is ultimately goes against the ideal of the United States. That could be Donald Trump. That could be another human being. It doesn't really matter. The, the, my my worry is that love doesn't win out in this. The unity doesn't right. win out in this. And I feel like you and I have a responsibility. No it's kidding. small. Yeah, I know. And so how do we let love win in this moment of We're gonna potential have to fight chaos? For it. You're gonna have to become a fighter. You have to you're gonna have to throw some serious punches if that's what you want. You have to be Muhammad Ali here because the moment you start criticizing anything, yeah, people you have to be a masterful communicator because that's why you're here. Look, Lex, in part, your decency is allowing you to do things that you couldn't otherwise do. I saw that you had Michael Malice on your podcast. Yeah. Now, Michael Malice is, I think of somebody who at his best is extremely shrewd and insightful, yes? Mm -hmm. He's also got this trolling game, which he's quite open about, and you talk to him about mm -hmm. it, which I can't stand. And that's this is the idea, oh, grandpa doesn't get the internet. Well, I'm grandpa, I don't get the internet. I don't love the trolling. Yeah. There are trolls of the past who were incredibly good. I don't see any of the modern trolls as being that kind of genius level trolling the people who deserve it in the way that they deserve it. You know, right now what I see is, is that anything that stands up gets cut down. Yeah. You know, it's like anything earnest. You have to turn it into cynicism and a meme. And it's, it's this idea that the people who believe that the world is chaos and has no point are constantly trying to let you know, don't try to use the internet for meaning, for decency, for goodness because we are going to find out that that's all sanctimonious hypocrisy and we will we will make you suffer. So I do think that there's a lot of sanctimonious hypocrisy in the world, some of it mine, some of it yours, but we all have it. And the trolls somewhat remove that, but it's not a judicious, kind, constructive, compassionate, caring version most of the time. And a lot of those trolls, and I, I have this feeling about Michael Malice, I don't know whether it's right, that there's somebody who deeply cares and loves beneath it, and that that's motivating some of the trolling behavior. And you and I don't seem to be doing that. I don't see you as almost ever trolling. Yeah, you and I are, I, I'm very much against trolling. I'm very much against trolling. It doesn't mean that it's selective. You know, I'm not even, it's not even true. Like I, everything we say, we say like, I'm, I'm for it, I'm against it. This isn't my native language. I speak nuance. I don't speak this internet shit. And, and I, the, right. the more I have to communicate through internet shit, right? I almost never take a tweet seriously if it contains the the letters LMAO, LOL, RTFL, you know, FOL. Mm -hmm. There's an interesting effect where people say stuff and then finish with LOL. You, you, you put it beautifully that it indicates to me that this is a person, we've talked about like why I wear the stupid suit. Yeah. Is like, this is anti, this is to fight the L LOL at the end of sentences is take, it's like stand up for the words you're saying. Yeah. Don't finish stuff with LOL, removing completely the responsibility of the content of the sentence that preceded it. Yeah, also choosing the outfit that worked both for Men in Black and the Blues Brothers, <laughs> not a terrible choice. <laughs> okay, but getting back, look, Lex, we're not in a position to do this. You need to be seated in a different chair. Your chair is the wrong chair. You're in the wrong chair. It's been so long. All right. I, I want to talk about you and Joe Biden. Joe Biden was a 29-year-old guy with nothing particular going on, so far as I can tell. Okay? 
I know people as impressive at age 29 as Joe Biden, you know, 12 rows back, three, three deep, doesn't matter. Huge number of people. None of them my age can get to where he got to. Like we're all morons. Anytime somebody takes out, like if you found Eddie Van Halen in a guitar shop, you'd be angry. What is this guy doing repairing guitars? And then somebody will say, maybe he loves to repair guitars. Yeah, I mean, what, what is your piano, Russian piano tuner doing? To what is piano? my Russian piano? Do? That, that was the whole point of that story, which is what yeah. is it that happened in that life that converted somebody? And I find this, for example, with Russian doctors who are you know technicians in offices now. There's a huge amount of talent in the world that's not sitting in its proper seat. And quite honestly, I've gotten to the point where my feeling is we've got to take the seats. Right. And may maybe we don't sit in them. Maybe the idea is that we take the seats and we put some smart Gen Z person in the seat and say, look, no chanting. I don't want to hear you say no justice, no peace. Right. If there aren't verbs, <laughs> if, it, if it rhymes, it's wrong. Like I, I used to have this thing, <laughs> if it rhymes, <laughs> things that rhyme are more true. Yeah. But like, in general, if something starts at one, two, three, four, I don't want to hear what the rest of your sentence is. Yeah. 